Welcome back. We traveled to the city of Detroit today in Air Force One and interviewed the president there. Here's part two of that interview. Do you talk to anyone before you tweet? And is there anyone in the White House who can say to you, Mr. President, please don't tweet that, who you would listen to? Well, let me tell you about Twitter. I think that maybe I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Twitter because I get such a fake press, such a dishonest press. I mean, if you look at, and I'm not including Fox because I think Fox has been fair to me, but if you look at CNN and if you look at these other networks, uh, NBC, I made a fortune for NBC with The Apprentice. I had a top show where they were doing horribly, and I had one of the most successful reality shows of all time. I made, and I was on for 14 seasons. And you see what happened when I'm not on. You saw what happened to the show. It was a disaster. I was on, I was very good to NBC, and I, they are despicable. They're despicable in their coverage. Uh, CBS, ABC, you take a look at what's going on. I call it the fake press, the fake media. Uh, it is a disgrace what's happening. So, but then me, they say to you, but you're, fa I mean, as you know, the response, look, so you had this big speech to the joint session on Tuesday. You had great press all week bipartisan and then you let off this tweet and immediately no, people say No, it wasn't say, that tweet. Uh, they had you other can't back things. Up what you say. Excuse me. I had a very successful night, joint session, it was right? very successful. I got reviews even from people that I would never think I was going to get good reviews. I got great reviews. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they came up with a new dialogue in order to kill that. So that speech was hot for about 2 or 3 hours after the speech was made because they came up with other things having to do with other people that they shouldn't have been able to do and they shouldn't have done, but they did it. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. So uh, the news is not honest, much of the news. It's not honest. And when I have close to 100 million people watching me on Twitter, w w including Facebook, including all of the Instagram, including POTUS, including lots of things, but we have, you know, I guess pretty close to 100 million people. I have my own form of media. So, you know, if I tweet uh, two or three or four or five times a day, and if most of them are good, and, and I, I really want them all to be good, but if I make one mistake in a month, now this one I don't think is going to prove to be a mistake at all. Do you think it's okay to make, because sure. the counter argument, sure. even from people who support you, who say, look, I support Donald Trump, I believe what he believes, and I want him to succeed badly, but if the president says something that cannot be proved or is demonstrably untrue, well, let's see whether he devalues his own currency. Let's see whether or not I proved it. You looked at some proof. I mean, let's see whether or not I prove it. I just don't choose to do it right now. I choose to do it before the committee, and maybe I'll do it before the committee. Maybe I'll do it before I see the result of the committee. But I think we have some very good stuff. And we're in the process of putting it together, and I think it's going to be very demonstrative. But just on Twitter, if I don't do that, I won't get my word out. Because when I tell, when I say things, the press doesn't cover it accurately. They cover it very inaccurately, much of the press. Some of the press, by the way, some of the finest people I know are reporters. Reporters are wonderful. I'm talking about the fake media, the fake news. And there's a lot of fake news. So if I'm not going to, if they're not going to do me the honor and the public the honor of spreading my word accurately as it was meant, and you know exactly what I'm talking about because there's been nobody in history that got more dishonest media than I've gotten. You look at some of the stories in the New York Times, you look at some of the stories in the Washington Post, take a look at what's going on with CBS and NBC in particular and ABC, and take a look at CNN. It's a complete hit job. No matter what you do, no matter how good, no matter how great it is, they don't report it in a positive fashion. So when I can reach whether it's 90 million or 100 million or 80 million, however many people it may turn out to be when you add everything up. And then, of course, it gets disseminated from there. When I can reach that many people, Twitter is a wonderful thing for me because I get the word out. Does it ever go through any kind of mediator? Sure, it does. Sure. You sometimes show your staff I'll, sure. Sometimes I'll have something and I'll say, what do you think about this? A lot of times my staff comes to me and they say, could you do a tweet or this or that because it's not being shown uh, correctly. I mean, they'll come to me a lot and they'll say, could you do, I probably wouldn't be here. I'm not talking about Twitter because it's really Twitter, Facebook and lots of other things, okay? But I might not be here talking to you right now as president if I didn't have an honest way of getting the word out. Last question. European nationalism obviously is flowering and a lot of it is about immigration and culture. Do you think it's possible to move a large Muslim population into the West and successfully integrate them into Western culture? Have you seen that anywhere? Well, it's not easy, and it certainly hasn't been easy. You look at Germany, uh, you know, I took a lot of heat over Sweden, and then the next day they had this massive riot, and now nobody talks about it. 
Uh, it certainly has not proven to be easy. Could At the we same time, here? well, they've been trying and will let you know. The assimilation has been very, very hard. It's been a very, very difficult process. Uh, I want this country to be safe. I want this country to be great. It's called Make America Great Again. That's where I got elected. I want people that love our country, and many Muslims do. Many, many Muslims do. But it has been a hard process. If you look at Germany, what's happened? If you look at Sweden, what's happened? If you look at Brussels, take a look at Brussels. I mean, look what's going on. Take a look at so many other places. It has been a very hard process. We are going to try very, very hard to make it work. Mr. President, thanks. Thank you very much.